You and I both saw Eren get taken out in the climactic finale to Attack on Titan, putting an end to the devastation of the rumbling and eliminating the Titans for good. But is this actually what happened? In this short video, I'll present all of the evidence that Eren is still alive, but his fate is worse than death. The ending of Attack on Titan led us to believe that Eren got rid of the Titan powers forever, a desperate solution to end the cycle of hatred. But there's one detail that completely puts this into question. As Mikasa holds up Eren's detached head, the Titan shifter marks are still on Eren's face. All of the other Titan shifters have reverted completely back to normal, with no trace of Titan shifter marks on their faces. Mappa and Isayama are notoriously meticulous, having an attention to detail that would not allow something as impactful as this to get overlooked. There's also zero chance Mikasa was able to get Eren's head half across the world to his burial site before the head decomposed, meaning the Titan's healing ability has to be at play here. We know Eren has been dishonest and duplicitous ever since he went to Marley. He's not above lying to the world and to his friends. I believe Eren wants the world to think that Titans have been eliminated forever in the greatest lie ever told in human history. So what happened then? I believe Eren has become the next Ymir, patiently waiting for another vessel to guide the world to a better place, or at least bring himself closer to his never-ending desire for freedom. Ymir and Eren share a staggering amount of parallels. Ymir was taken as a slave and made to serve under King Fritz. One day she set a pig free from its pen and was harshly punished. In her moment of deepest despair, she gained the power of the Titans. She served under King Fritz, helping him expand and prosper, and even taking a spear for him. She ultimately gave her life to protect him, losing her will to live and choosing to give up the ghost. She was denied a childhood, and a life of her own. She did all of this out of love for King Fritz. Eren was born into a world enslaved to the Titans, and lost his childhood to the pursuit of eliminating them. In his moment of deepest despair, he used the power of the Titans, and continued to build up the knowledge and power of the island of Paradis through his demon-like desire for freedom. Eren also chose to let go in the end and allowed himself to be defeated, just like Ymir. Eren lived to fight the Titans and died so that his friends could live long lives. Both Eren and Ymir were robbed of a life of their own. Ymir gained her power by falling into a mysterious tree, extremely similar to the one that forms on Eren's burial site. This is a cycle. Isayama has written a story spanning thousands of years. In the history books of the world, it's written that Emir made a pact with the devil of all earth. Doesn't that sound exactly like what Eren had become? In the depiction of Emir making a deal with the devil, we have a large tree on both sides of them, indicating some form of existential cycle. Emir lived on as god of the paths world, crafting titans one by one and serving as a sort of gatekeeper to the devastating power of the rumbling. Emir suffered and toiled for 2,000 years, blinded by her misguided love for her oppressor, taking taking 2,000 years to find the closure she needed to let go. I believe Eren will follow the same fate, lying dormant, waiting for someone to help him achieve the true freedom he's always wanted. The freedom Eren felt during the rumbling was a fleeting moment. It was an actual, lasting freedom. Given that Eren was depicted in this moment as a child, it could be argued that it was nothing more than a delusion. Eren still craves true freedom. He directly stated that in order to obtain freedom, he will take freedom away from the world. Eren losing his life, only for Paradis to be destroyed from global conflict does not sound like real freedom. Ymir waited thousands of years for someone to free her from the agony of her love. Eren will seek someone who can either help him achieve this insatiable desire for freedom, or unchain him from this endless pursuit. When Ymir, an innocent child, was harshly punished for freeing an animal, she fell into a large tree where a strange entity offered hope in her moment of deepest despair. The large tree that formed above Eren's burial site has remained intact despite all of the global conflict. Eren has become this entity, looking to share his power with a chosen person in their darkest hour. This theory is reinforced with the visual of a phoenix in the outro of Season 4 Part 1. A flaming phoenix transforms into a large tree, showing how Eren, through his endless pursuit of freedom, will become the entity that grants power to the next tragic soul. Why would Eren do this? The fact that the bird at the end wraps the scarf around Mikasa means that he's watching over the Eldians in some omniscient sort of way. Eren is without any doubt completely unhappy with the way things turned out. He destroyed 80% of the world, global conflict continued despite his efforts, the island of Paradis was destroyed, he was never physically able to see the world with Armin, and possibly the worst of them all, he died a virgin. The paths have been established as a place existing without death, where Eren can theoretically keep on living. On top of this, it's important to note that Ymir can bring Eren back if she wanted to. Even after Zeke set off the lightning spear at point-blank range, Ymir pieced his body back together in the paths. Eren is the only person who seemed to understand her, granting him her full power. If Ymir can also see the aftermath of Eren's choices, it would make sense for her to want to change the future as well. So what did Ymir gain from the rumbling? We're led to believe Ymir allowed the rumbling to happen to get revenge against the world for what she was made to endure. I believe this is true, but there's more to it. I believe living eternally as a slave within 
the paths is an unbearable punishment for Ymir, and she wishes for Eren to take her place. It should be mentioned that in both the anime and the manga, immediately after we see Ymir vanish, what we see next is the young child of Historia. This could suggest that Ymir knew she would get a second chance at life once Eren takes her place in the paths. Eren's fate is worse than death, as he has to live in perpetual regret for the horrific things he's done, realizing that it was all for nothing in the end, since the island of Paradis was destroyed. All alone, Eren must endure the guilt and regret for the lives he's taken, along with feeling an unbearable void for everything he wasn't able to do in his lifetime. Eren most likely needs a human vessel to create a new cycle, to create a better outcome this time. Eren is desperately waiting for what quite literally is an eternity for someone to free him of his guilt, and possibly change the fate of mankind. We know this isn't the end for Attack on Titan. The incredible commercial success of the series means getting a continuation is more than likely. This begs the question, would you risk giving us completely new characters or possibly leave in an entirely new story, the most likely scenario is an unsettling one. Eren is alive and has retained the power of the Titans. Mikasa's iconic See You Later also supports the notion of Eren existing after what we've seen so far. This isn't her last goodbye. She could be referring to the afterlife, but something about that feels really off, especially considering the horrible things Eren has done. The idea that Eren is still alive and retained the power of the Titans would allow the series to continue in a way that makes sense, and allow for one hell of a trailer. My next video will cover all of the potential scenarios for the next season of Attack on Titan, and you don't want to miss it. See you later, everyone.